So I'm going to start here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Full Media Part 31, Song Cycles. In today's episode, we set out to take our score and turn it into what we call Cycle 1 and add passing chords and then listen to those passing chords in terms of cadences and statences. So a passing chord is you take the first note in the backbone, which is like a D-flat, and the note before it, and the note after it. In the first note, there's only one note after it. And you put those together, and you get a D-flat and a D, which gives you this chord here. And that turns out to be a tonic chord. And then you go through to the next one, and the D, you take the note before it and after it, which gives you the D and the F, and the D-flat, and that gives you this chord. And you go all the way through and do that for everything. So we ended up, and for all the minor chords, we got four intervals and chords. Sound like this. And here, the major. And the common. And interestingly, the minor and major are all tonic, which turns out to make sense and the common are almost all dominant, which also turns out to make sense, and we'll show that in a minute. Uh, like we said, we got tonics because, by definition, we only had roots, modes, and neutrals. We eliminated any nuns, and those scales had no urge notes. And then in the common, we had roots, neutrals, and urges only, and that leaves you with dominance. So we can theoretically make um, some cadences out of that, and that is one of our ideas for next time. The next thing we did was to go back to our animations and take our new score with all these wonderful parts and re-export them and then redo the uh, this. So the score figures look like this. We also updated our um, charts. We had been fussing in our mind about the way the charts looked, and we went back and redid them into something that looked a little more explanatory. This is scale 6. It's figures 1, 2, 3, and 4. The blue is how many roll notes are in there, 12, 15, 16, 15. Uh, this is how many hop notes there are which are, you know, 10, blah da da blah da da blah da da And then finally, what is the roll to hop note ratio? And what's interesting, again, is that depending on the scale figure, there's a variation in the total number of roll notes. You get a maximum in the middle. But in terms of roll to hop, you get this. So, so we think that that's going to be a factor. But we basically, this video, the purpose of this video is to highlight the the the, uh, the score and the scales that are going in it. So the next thing that we did was we then uh, re-exported both movies and we went into our video editor, video editor, and put both of them together and we added a whole label line up here so that when it starts playing it looks like this. Minor one. Minor two, you can see it right here. Minor three, minor four, and so on. So we did that. We rendered that movie as well. And we have that available. So we have lots and lots and lots of movies to, to work with further. And the idea is to continue to cycle between the aural, hearing, and the visual for more ideas. So what we're going to do now is play what it sounds like just to hear the backbone and the passing chords. And it's interesting if we if we muted if we mute and just listen to the backbone, we get this. Which is syncopated and nice and kind of weak. If 
we then, wherever we are now, I'm going to have to remember all these. If we just listen to the, the new passing chords, we get something a little denser in texture, but also kind of blurry. So if we put them both together, we get this. which we feel uh, still lets the backbone, the backbone is forte. The, the backbone is the melody, is the star of this piece so far. And the passing chords and the, uh, the rolling notes are kind of accompanists uh, in the background. So what we're gonna do is listen to this whole thing before we uh, roll on out here. This is just the backbone with its passing chords. Here we go. So we really kind of had two major phases in today's episode. One was adding the passing chords, and the second one was, was working with the animations. And we're still basically uh, still basically aiming at, at this result down here. Uh, getting something that sounds... Um, more balanced and interleaved. We could get some cadences out of this because um, we can, yeah, that's what it says right there. We can make, we get some statances, direct cadences and half cadences. I mean, basically we have tonics and dominance and modes to work with. So that's our game plan. Thank you for your time and attention. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. A shout out to Kyla Can Be Cool for his contribution today. Look forward to seeing you all, and as always, keep on streaming.